Yes, thanks very much for me. Jacques just joined us after practice. So, Jacques, how do you describe confidence and rallying the camp after that uh, awesome performance at the Oval? I think uh, obviously we can take quite a lot of confidence from that. Um, I think the danger for us is going into this test match and being too um, caught, still caught up in that moment, the way we play down at the Oval. Um, but I have to say, we're not really a results orientated team. I think something we did really well down uh, at the Oval was basically just sticking to our process. I thought our bowlers, especially after the first day, people would have said we didn't bowl as well as we would have liked to, but we thought we bowled pretty well. We did, just didn't get the um, result. So it will be important for us to lock straight back into our processes when we get onto the field on Thursday. So whilst it was obviously a very good performance in one test match, avoiding complacency is going to be a key for you, do you think? Definitely. Um, but I must say, the, the old squad is in good space at the moment. Um, everyone's training particularly well, so um, there's like a quiet conference around in our camp at the moment. You were so good. I mean, obviously you didn't get a go to, uh, batting-wise. Obviously you've had the game uh, at Worcester, but in a way, with just two wickets falling, there are batters who haven't had test match time out in the middle. Yeah, I was the chief ball shiner for most of the time. Um, but yeah, we spent some time down in Worcester. It wasn't the easiest wicket for batters to bat on, so some of us got some time in the middle. But... I think the same thing before this test series, people were saying we didn't play enough cricket, but then our batters go out and bat it the way they did, and the, the guys that got in. So I think for people like myself, AB and JP, we can take a lot of confidence from that. A lot of um, post-mortem sort of talk from the England camp, obviously after such a devastating defeat. Well, what are you expecting from them for the second test match? It's a, it's a must-win game for them, confidence-wise, as much as anything. Obviously, it's also um, their own ground advantage that they got to try and rely on. But um, uh, we, we're very well aware that they will come back fighting more so than the first Test match. Um, but like I said, as long as we can just concentrate on our own game, that's what's most important to us. Thanks very much indeed, Jack, for your time. Thank you. Cheers. So looking ahead further England-wise, what are you actually expecting from them? Are you expecting a, a much more convincing performance given their, well, you know, they are still the best in the world? Well, they, they're a very methodically trained team. Um, they've done really well over the last couple of months, hence the fact that they're number one. So um, we're expecting quite a strong fight back from them. Um, you wouldn't expect anything else than that. Um, but as long as we can just keep doing what we've been doing in the first test match, um, I think our guys were really humble in the way they, they went around their business. And we've got to try and do the same in this test. And I suppose for you as a team, it's a chance to show almost your ruthless streak as well. There, there have been times in the past when you've been in such strong positions, but perhaps not finished off, you know, teams. This is a, a good chance for you to show that you can do that now as well. I wouldn't necessarily say that's the case because I think over the last three or four years, um, we've won a couple of series and we did really well. And also the last time we were here, the guys did really well. So we can take a lot of confidence from, from that. And... Uh, if you could get to number one in the world in Test Match Cricket, because you, you know, you've been a very consistent team over the last of 18 months, what would that mean to the squad to be the best Test team in the world? Yeah, I think if we get there, it will, it will possibly just be a result of what we've done over the last couple of years since Gary started with this team. Um, the good thing is that the squad hasn't changed that much, like the same people on the same positions most of the time, and I think that gives players quite a lot of confidence, and they grow into their positions, and for that reason, the unit becomes a little bit stronger. And you're back, of course. This is very familiar territory for you. Is that a help for you psychologically because you just know the ground and the conditions so well here? It's a little bit home away from home and I see the conditions haven't changed that much. But um, no, it's great to be back here. I've had five very good years here, um, some fond memories, some very good mates that I've made here. So it's really nice for me to be back here. Uh, and they do say you almost you look look above, really, than rather what's sort of, uh, down below, given, given the conditions here. I, I guess you must feel that you've got the bowlers who could almost exploit the conditions here at Headingley. I think both bowling attacks are fairly decent bowling attacks. Um, I think as, from a South African point of view, there's always been a perception that Headingley might be a wicket that does quite a lot, but it's not necessarily always the case because I've got the experience here. Uh, when the sun's out, it's a great wicket to bat on. Um, obviously, the over overhead conditions will play quite a big role.